Hello and welcome to the Gallant Few Rangers podcast. My name is Mason Stewart and I'll be your host for another Best Eleven feature. Um, it's been a while, but I'm absolutely delighted to say we've got good friend of the pod, David Hurdon. How are you, David? I'm good, thanks. Thanks thank, thanks for giving me this challenge to try and come up with. Uh, I've only had about 10 sleepless nights since you've asked me to do it. <laughs> it is tough, isn't it? And, and, and as you said, like, it's... I haven't done mine yet, but um, I have changed mine week to week, day to day on on certain positions. And has it been the same same for you? Just wait till you've been going for fifty years, Paul. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously. But I think it's like every like every other fan, you'll have certain favourites that probably you'll never change your mind till the day you die, yeah. and then there'll be other ones that change every. 20 minutes, depending on the mood you're in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like this current Rangers teammate, to be honest with you. Oh, jeez, yeah. No, no. That changes uh, minute by minute. Um, but, but David, before we get onto the, the team and, and we go through that, um, just like to obviously give a mention to, to your books. Um, I know Colin has had you on. Uh, and, yeah. and anyone that hasn't sort of, you know, gone on and watched or, or listened to that, I, I would really, you know, advise it. We'll, we'll put the link in there. Um, when, when this goes out as well, so people have yeah. got easy access to that. But um, yeah, just tell us obviously a little bit more about about the you know your books and and I think you've got a new one coming out. Am I right in saying? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, well, my my first Rangers book came out about a year ago, um, early early last year. It was called 1872, and it was it was a series of biographies of of Rangers players from the first 75 years of the club's history. So even I hadn't seen any of them that I was writing about. Um, my second one was a history of Rangers winning the week up, uh, which I was desperately hoping I was going to write a new chapter for a few weeks back, but um, that's just going to have to go back another year. So, Kings of the Week Up was the second one that came out because I've won it more than anyone else. And my, my latest book is uh, the story of 1977 78. That was uh, John Gregg's last season as a player, Jock Wallace winning the treble, David Cooper's first season. It was a kind of beginning and end of an era, so um. That was a kind of leave it all up, to be honest with you. Yeah, no, no brilliant. That that sounds like a, a really, really good read, David. And obviously the League Cup, um, yeah, that absolutely don't want to bring it back up again. But um I sort of go back when I you know, when I was, you know, young. Um, I feel like we won the League Cup, you know, all, all the time. It was yeah, something that was just like, good, isn't it? But for the younger supporters now, it's um well, what, what was it, 2010? Two fa- was it 2010? Well, 10 11 season, yeah. Um yeah. I went to my first League Cup final in 1975. I show my age already. Um, we just beat Celtic 1-0. And by 1999, so that tw- 25 in 25 years, I never missed a final. And I saw us win it 14 times. So, so, so that... That's why you say you think Rangers own the League Cup. In my generation, we absolutely own the League Cup. Um, it, was, yeah, yeah. it was really unusual yeah. to see the team picture without it at the front. Yes, man, it's changed time, but hopefully uh, that, that's going to come back, back daily. Yeah. But just, just, just on, on the yeah. books, David, where can um, people go and buy and access the, the you know your books? The, the, the simplest thing to do is go to Amazon. Right. Um, if you just look up my, my name on it, although it'll be David Rowell and Davey on it, um, I've got an author page on it and the, the three books are there. Obviously, the, the latest one's only pre-sale at the moment. Um, it's not actually out yet to the 1st of May. Um Actually, they've, they've put a little, I think they've got about 20 or 30 percent off at the moment. The oh, folk want to go in it just now, um, to try and encourage people to buy them. But if you just go into the either that, if you if you type in Rangers books, Glasgow Rangers books into Amazon, and it'll, it'll bring a, a chart out, and they're, they're in amongst all them. You can do it through the publishers, but Amazon's usually cheapest because usually you get the postage free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't beat a bit of Amazon, can I? Yeah, I know. When, when, the new, when the new one comes out, it will be in the Watson stores in Scotland. But obviously, it's not out yet. No, brilliant. No, thank, thanks for that, David. Um, I appreciate it. And again, you know, sort of echo that. Anyone that, that, that wants to get David's books, please, please do. But, David, I've, I've actually... So, your best 11. Um, yeah. I've thrown, I'm going to throw one in before we can get to any players. I think I know the answer. But okay. you just mentioned two Rangers managers um, a couple of minutes ago. Who would be manager of this, you know, of your team? Who's been the best Rangers manager of your lifetime? Um, I think that's pretty simple to be honest with you. But um, there's there's best managers and there's managers that leave an impression with you, if, yeah. if you know what I mean. So, Jock Wallace was an absolute idol of mine. Yeah. 
his his first spell at Rangers, he he wasn't just a great manager. He was he was, he was a great Rangers man, and I absolutely loved him to bits. Um, and I'll tell you something else. He he picked very attacking football teams. Uh, he's got this reputation as being this hard man that made them run up and down sand dunes all the time. But um, he always played two wingers. He always had teams attacking first minute to last. He was a very attacking, <laughs> attacking manager. I loved watching these teams. Uh, so Jock Wallace was a hero. As soon as changed my life. And as soon as, <laughs> and as, soon as came, he just utterly changed everything. Uh, he made Rangers into what my dad always said Rangers were, which was just this club that sat above everybody else. And it was, it was marvellous. He was so good, I named my son after him. So as soon as, as, soon as, as was, was the greatest for me. But if you talk about football managers, it's Walter Smith. Of course it is. Um, well, actually, the, the Walter the second time round was probably even more incredible than he was the first time round. And the first time round, he was absolutely unstoppable almost. Um, he just got it. He just, he just, it was only, if a man was born to be the Rangers manager, it was probably him. Um, he just, he just totally gets the club. He gets, he gets the support and he, he wins trophies. And that's actually what that's actually what it's really about. Interesting you say that about him the the, the second time round, Davy. Did you did because obviously he was well obviously well liked, well loved the first time, you know, yeah, around. But absolutely. I'll be honest, my, my dad always says that there was times where I don't know if you're you're the same here, but he said there was times where he, he wanted Smith to go the, the the you know the first time round quite because of Europe, because of the results in Yeah. Yeah. Um well that, that's the, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. There was there was definitely there wasn't just grumblings about um, Europe. There was the, at the time there was quite a few grumbles about this a stand of the football because we had such an expensive team compared with most other teams and we weren't and we struggled a lot when we shouldn't have done. Yeah, we still yeah. won lots of trophies, but it was sometimes quite a hard watch, <laughs> especially maybe not the last years when Gascoigne and Loudrop appeared, and maybe not the. The, the first bit of his management when Hateway McCoy stood at their peak. But there was this little middle bit that it, it was it was a wee bit hard going sometimes. Um and there was there was definitely grumblings about it. There was definitely grumbling. In fact, even the second time in Kaunas beat us, if you remember in Europe, um yeah. there was there was a there was a number of people who thought he should go then quite incredibly. But um he was he he'll go down people will be talking about him in a hundred years to be the way people talk about Struth and Waddle and guys like that, he, he's, he's going to be a giant forever. Yeah, I mean, I can't wait till that, that statue goes up, baby, because it's, mm-hmm. it's you know, he deserves it, doesn't he? I wonder if always cardigan on, for those for those <laughs> that remember the 90s. Well, um, you know, you say, it's funny you say that, but um, even, you know, as a kid, I always say this, but as a kid, sort of, you know, I, I was, I don't know, when he, when he left the first time, I think I would have been, what, six or seven, something like that. But um, but I always just remember what he just how, always how smart he was. Do you know what I mean? That was just one of the first sort of things mm-hmm. that that you remember of Smith. So uh, he just even as I say the second time he was always immaculate. Um, well, and as you said that just you know as a Rangers yeah, manager, I can very very rarely remember Rangers managers that weren't expected to be like that. Um, yeah. In fact, I'll sh- I really will show how old fashioned I am. I I, I don't like. The fact Michael Beale doesn't shave, I really don't like that. <laughs> and it, it's, it's, it's probably a generational thing. I'm sure it's a generational thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you're going to wear a short and tight, at least have a shave as well, please. Please. <laughs> you know what? It's funny you say that. I see that uh, a comment a little while ago on, on Twitter, and I know Twitter can be a mad place for the best of times. Oh, I don't, I don't do it. I don't. Do it. <laughs> and it was about John Gregg when he's got the uh, European trophy, and he he hasn't had a shave. Uh, but there's obviously a story behind that. That oh, he, yeah. he, 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 cut, he, he cut his he cut his face and he couldn't shave and yeah. and, we start, and we started winning and he and he said oh, I'm only going to shave this off if we get knocked out and yeah. and we didn't it, so he just kept wearing it. It just made me laugh that that someone put that and said um this you know it's the the only Europe European trophy we've got and he's he's not had a shave. I, like, oh, I know, I know. It's mental, isn't it? Um, but, uh, Stan- but yeah. standards, 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 no, standards no, are it. what we're built on. No, absolutely. Um, you know. But yeah, Walter Smith, as I said, that was a, that was one I would have picked. But um, you know, you said about Jock Wallace there as well. That actually surprised yeah. me, maybe, because everything I've sort mm-hmm. of heard or you know, sort of that that he the way he was obviously here about all the running. You saying he played a really attacking team did as a, as a probably a little bit surprised me. See, there. See, he had this reputation. See, because his teams were so fit. 
Yeah. They had, th- they had this reputation about they were just big physical players that just ran over the top of other teams. Couldn't be further for the truth. I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'll talk I'll talk about three or four players, no doubt. Yeah. From his teams. Um but if you just look at the, the signings he made over the year, he was he was always buying wingers, he was always buying creative midfield players. He, he, Sandy Jarden, for example, full fullback going forward all the time. He, he wasn't he wasn't a defensive man, manager in any way. He was he was an attacking manager. Even the second in the second time he came back, although it wasn't successful, he he was giving guys like Ian Durant their chance. He, Derek Ferguson, or he started with Greg, but Derek Ferguson put a lot of games under him. Um, he, he, he gave youngsters a chance as well. Um, oh yeah, I thought he was a he was a, he was a great man. I, I remember meeting him. He scared the life out of me, but he, he was a great man. <laughs> he's got that. I love I love watching all his old his old clips, his old videos. He just didn't he didn't mess about, did he? But uh, yeah, he was he, fright, yeah frightening to uh, interview. Uh, I bet. I'd 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 love if there was a time machine that um, Jock Wallace could sit in a TV studio with Michael Stewart. Oh, I don't think Stuart would get out of line, <laughs> well, that, that, that's, that's exactly what I'm suggesting. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, right, David, let's get, let's get on this uh, 11 then. Uh, obviously, start, yeah. start from the back. Um, if you could go through and tell us what sort of formation you're going to play. And, and, and you, you young guys always talk about formations <laughs> and stuff like that. Ah, oh, Jesus. Just get all um, the guys in. Yeah, uh, well, sort of. There'll, there'll be a back four. And there'll be two wingers, and we'll, we'll take it for there. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, okay, goalkeepers. Um, so what, what I've ended up doing with this, I've created a kind of long list. I just dumped names down that I think deserve to be thought about. Yeah. Then I've cut it down to a kind of short list who are actually got a chance to get in the team. Um, so the long list, if you like, when I go back to when, the, when I first went to, to see to see Rangers longer ago than you can remember, um, Peter McCloy was the goalkeeper most of the time. Now, Peter McCloy will not make this team. Right. But I think he deserves to get mentioned simply because he, he's the only go- he's the, the, the record uh, appearance holder for a goalkeeper for Rangers. He's got way over 500 appearances. Um, and he won, he won the European Trophy. He was... Oh. He was actually picked by Willie Waddle and by Walter Smith. <laughs> so Walter Smith picked him as a caretaker when when before Sunnis arrived. So 16 years at Rangers, I think he he deserves to get mentioned. He's he's not going to make the team. Um, but he deserves to get mentioned. But I think um in all my time watching Rangers, the goalkeeping position changed when Sunnis arrived. In effect, there was plenty I saw plenty of goalkeepers. McCoy especially, Stuart Kennedy back in the 70s as well, who had one great season when we won the league in 74-75, but um, the standard of goalkeeping just just rocketed when Sunnis arrived. Um, and the, the the four great goalkeepers I've had in effect are Chris Woods, uh, Andy Gorham, Stephen Kloss and Alan McGregor. That, that, that's the four great goalkeepers I think I've seen. Um, and then, and then I say to myself, do I just make them all the shortlist or do I actually try to... Um, so I think in any other any other club, if they're asked to do a, a 1-11, supporters of any other club, apart from Rangers, I think Callum McGregor would win it. Yeah. <laughs> Which tells you that I think who's, who is going to be my goalkeeper. But um, I think in any other... I can't think of another goalkeeper for another club who's been as impressive for as long as Alan McGregor has at Rangers. And yet, I don't think he's the best goalkeeper I've seen from the club. Um, McGregor has it's been absolutely sensational. And that, that that season when we won 55, actually, was as close as I've ever seen to the guy I have ended up putting, because um, he was absolutely brilliant. Um, that, that, that save he... Um, was it Slavia Prague right at the end of the game? I, 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 I remember watching that and thinking, I, I don't believe I've just seen that. <laughs> it's believe. Yeah, I mean, he said some, some great saves, but that one stands stood out for me. Um, so McGregor was almost it. And I've got to mention Chris Woods because I, th- I think he's the one that changed everything when it came to goalkeepers for Rangers. Um, he came in, he was... He was 
well, he was he was the second choice for England when he came in, but he soon became the England goalkeeper. I mean, just the England international goalkeeper for Christ's sake. <laughs> I mean, that's just I suppose for MD after the early nineties, probably nobody would believe that. Yeah. Um, Chris was was a man who really commanded his area. He he, he dominated his, his goal. He was a he just was a proper goalkeeper. Um. And Stefan Klaus won the Champions League. He was he was an excellent keeper for years as well. Um, but but you know who I'm going to pick. There's, there's, I think most most people will go of my age will probably all take the same goalkeeper, and that's Andy Gore. And, and there was a there was a period in the 1990s that I genuinely think he would have been the best goalkeeper on the planet. I, 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 maybe because he played in Scotland, he might not have been viewed as as such a thing. Yeah, yeah. But um, I wouldn't have swapped him for anybody, anybody at all. In fact, I think it tells you something that the year we, we almost got to the Champions League final, we won the treble. Gorham won Player of the Year. Did he really, yeah? Is that, what that, yeah. Is that, is that the 92, 93? 92, 92, 93 season. McCoy scored, I don't know, just about 50 goals. Him and Hately ran riot all over, all over Britain, all over Europe. Uh, we had an eye on defence. We were absolutely, but Andy Gorham was... He was the players, players player of the year and the player of the year in Scotland that year. Yeah. He was just, he was just phenomenal. The number of points he must have won that team over the years, and he and he done it in the biggest games as well. Um, there was a period of time in the in the nineties we used to go to Parkhead, and it was almost like they were playing against a brick wall. I, I, you just, you just, you just don't know how he how he done it half the time. Yeah. Um, the the season I was talking about we. We we won down at Leeds in the in the Wednesday night in the in the European Cup, and he he eventually conceded a goal with two minutes to go. But he he was he was making great saves every five minutes almost. It felt like it. And everybody said he could, you'll never see a get a goalkeeping performance in that in your life. We went to Parkhead on the Saturday and he was, he was every bit as good again. Uh, we, we beat we beat them one 0 and I think on pressure they should they should have beat us about six or seven one. But he just stopped everything. Um, he was just incredible. What a goalkeeper he was. He wasn't big, um, but he, 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 he seemed to fill the goal whenever I, I, he was one of the, the goalkeepers when I, when I forward went through on him. You fancied the goalkeeper to stop it, no matter yeah. who it was, <laughs> no matter who the player was. The, the one that sticks out for him, Davey, is the, the, Hoy, the Van, Hoy, Van Hoydert one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's still, yeah, that's the still. It's hot. You were saying about Alan McGregor there and... Um, you said about the Slavia Prague one, but the the Verde Bremen one always sticks. Bremen out. as well, absolutely. But yeah. I don't think I could pick a favourite save between that Van Hoy that one and Ver, Verde Bremen one because they're two that you just uh, well, obviously I was a bit young for the the Gora yeah. one, but you just turn away it's a goal. You just there's no absolutely. way you're getting there, and it's just like how, 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 did, how did he save that? Incredible, but yeah, I mean I'm, I'm, I say I've not seen Gorham sort of live or, but what, you know I feel like all his highlights are as you just said there the big games. The old firm games, the European games, um, yeah. and it's just save after save. Um, and I suppose I mentioned earlier on that sometimes the team in the nineties struggled in games that that they really shouldn't have done. I suppose everybody does that really when you think about it. But um, Gordon made so many great saves in games at Ibrox. We won one 0 or one two one. That's just completely forgotten about now. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't know, I don't Dundee or Dundee United or. Airdrie or whoever it happened to be, he'd be, he'd be doing nothing for half an hour. Then suddenly he pulled this absolutely unbelievable save out. That's what I'm saying. The number of points he actually won the team. Yeah. So I, they called him the goalie, and I, 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 you get you get why he was he was he was he was the man. And I think to be fair, the majority of supporters of my age group will probably all go for him. Yeah, because he. And I think it tells you how good he was when you think about how good these other guys were. That, that when, when, to be fair, when, when, when as, like yourself, come on and say, you know, Gorham over McGregor, I do think, Kai he must have been something else then, because um, as you just said there with McGregor as well, he's been, he's been some of his game is saved as well. Yeah. Was it, was it, is it close? Is it close, David, or is it? Uh, you know, he runs away. With it's, it? it's, it got, cl- it got closer for a while. Yeah. yeah. Funnily enough. Gordon probably stayed for a little bit too long. Right. He was just he, his last his last season. He gave two or three really bad goals away. Like McGregor, 
And McGregor's done the same thing. McGregor's done the same thing. Yeah. Um, we t- we tend to gloss over Gorham's last season a little bit. I think when he had, I think he he's he wasn't the best trainer. I don't think he had the best attitude. In truth. Yeah. And probably that last season wasn't the real McGregor with the real Gorham, but um, he was so good for five or six years though. <laughs> he was he was so good. You let him have that. Is it, is, it, is it close? Yeah, it's closer than it's it's closer than it used to be because I think McGregor's fifty five season made me because I always used to put Woods at number two, and right. I, I know McGregor's went above him in my in my head probably since that fifty five season. Yeah, no, no, <clears throat> two or three, four, four top goalkeepers in without even going on to to Stefan Klaus, who another as you exactly. Said, I know. I know, but um, yeah, good start, Davy. Um, so one of your one of your fullbacks you can go from uh, I don't know, right, right back or, or left. Oh, I'm I'm old, I'm old fashioned. You go number one, then number two. So right, yeah, it's, it's got to be the right back, hasn't it? Um, so for right back, does that does that? I didn't take too long of a right back, if I'm honest with you. It's one of the few that didn't take me very long. I think there's there's been some good right backs. Um, I used to like Sergio Perini, funnily enough, in the, back in the late 90s. I thought he was a, big, a good old-fashioned, solid, defensive player that very few wingers get the better of. Um, Alan Hutton was terrific for about six months, but he, he wasn't terrific for long enough. No. But, but there was that little period of time. He was playing Champions League games and running right. <laughs> he, was, he was suddenly brilliant. The Stuttgart, but, Stuttgart game at home. Then, yeah, yeah. I remember the, that night just thinking, he's he's gone soon, because I just he was unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, that game, but as a Rangers career, it was only, it was only a bit, it was less than a season, probably. Yeah. There's, 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 the short list has got three on it. Um, the current captain's there, right. so I'm not going to surprise anybody when I say n- none of the current team have made my all time, <laughs> all time 11. I, I won't probably won't surprise anybody, yeah. but I think, I think Tavernier gets a bit of a raw deal, yeah. if I'm honest. Um, and I think he gets a raw deal compared to the other two guys I'm going to talk about because he plays in an era that every game's televised and every game's analysed to death. Yeah. Um, and it, it's almost as if these days um, every goal is a defensive mistake. Yeah. Um, it's, it's almost as if yeah. wingers aren't allowed to beat fullbacks. So fullbacks aren't allowed to let crosses in the box anymore. Um, there's never been a fullback born that hasn't let a cross into the box or hasn't conceded a daft goal. Um, Tavern is actually a better defender than people give him credit for. He's, he's not, he's, he's, that's not his strength. I'm not saying it is, but he's, he's actually a better right back, I think, than a lot of I mean, I, 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 I said to Ibrox, I think, and a lot of people, all they talk about is how, how crap a defender is. I, don't, I think that's really unfair. And I think they've been conditioned to think that way because of the, the, the way modern football is. With all the, but the thing I like most about Tavern here, apart from the fact the number of goals he scored, is um, I think he never hides. I, I like the fact that he, no matter how the game's going, he'll still try to do the right thing. Yeah. Um, now, sometimes it doesn't come off when he comes into all kinds of abuse. And the easy thing to then do would be then play the safe pass the next thing, and he doesn't do that. Yeah. And sometimes that means he puts three crap crosses in, in a row because he's still trying to do the right thing. And I like that. I like yeah. that in a, in a player. It's a typical case, David, with Tavernier that we won't, well, a lot, as you said, a lot of the support won't know what they are till it's gone. Yeah. And the yeah. replacement him has got Big, big shoes to fill. Um, but, yeah, you, you're spot on. I, yeah. I agree. Really. Um, he's, he's not the best right back I've seen, but he's. I, I, I wanted to put him in this shot simply because I think he gets a bit of a, a raw deal quite a lot of the time. But by, by... He wasn't as good as the other two guys, if I'm honest with you. So, Gary Stevens, who was um, the right back at the start of nine in a row, uh, Graham soon as brought him in for Everton. He was another England international. He was a he was a terrific right back. He was he was one of these modern athletic fullbacks who seemed to just he could get him down the park all day. Yeah. But he was a really, really good defender. He was a really strong tackling player. Um he, he'd already won a European trophy with Everton, he won the league with Everton. He was an England international. I mean, he, he was he was a top player. We only got him because the English teams were banned for Europe, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he 
I don't, I don't think Rangers lost a league championship with him in the team, to be honest. I think, I think all the time he was there, we won the league every year. How many years was Gary Stephen there, David? Do you know if, the, if he was the uh, He got, he missed a lot of games towards the end of his Rangers career injured. I think, I think he left about 94, but he never, he never played it that much after sort of, once 92, 93 came in, he, he was injured. Um, he came back for a little while, then went back out injured again. But from sort of 88 to 92, he was he was terrific. Yeah. He was he was an excellent player. Um and it, it takes an excellent player to be better than him. To be honest with you, it takes a really and I don't think anyone will be surprised who my right back is either, to be honest with you. But uh, it has to be Sandy Jarden. San, Sandy Jarden was an absolute Rolls Royce of a of a, a right back. Um so the, the first the first Rangers team I saw he was right back in it. And he stayed the right back for Years, although he had actually just before my time, he'd been an inside forward, and I, and I think he was a player. He could, he could play at full back. He could play at sweeper. He could play at centre back. He could play in midfield. He was just a really, really good football player. Um, he played for Scotland a lot. Nineteen seventy four World Cup. He was one of the best right backs in the tournament. Yeah. Um, he was just class. He was just, he was he was a good defender, but he was a great football player. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's almost like if he hadn't been a right back, he might have ended up being in this team somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Is he, is um, he a good David? Yeah, that he could have. Oh, he was quite easily played up. Well, he, he was um, when he when Rangers sold him, he was he was well in his thirties. He went to Hearts, and he ended up the Scottish Player of the Year at Hearts as a sweeper. Uh, the year Hearts should have won the league in 85, 86. And he was about 37 or 38 year old by that time. Um, he could re he, his reading of the game was just incredible. He actually didn't make too many last gas tackles because he actually could read a game. And he was able to intercept things before he had to make last gas tackles. That's a sign of a good player, isn't it? Ah, he, he, was, he, was, he was just class. He was like a class football. And he was a... He was, a, he was a leader as well, although he wasn't the captain most of the time. I, I watched Rangers, but uh, you can see he was a vocal. He was vocal. He was a leader. And he, he's just he was just a full thing for me. Um, I can't imagine there's been too many better right backs that's ever played for Rangers. I can't. There might be, possibly where, but there, there can't be very many. I don't think he was. He was sensational. I think he's going to be very, very popular in in this uh, best eleven. Yeah. I think that he'll be. I think so. And I'm 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 wary of the fact that um, the, the the fans done a greatest of living. Um, God, that must be over twenty years ago now. And, um, my first, and and my, and my first my first two or the first two in that greatest of living. It's almost as if I'm copying it already. <laughs> yeah. You're going you're going that way. That was that was some team as well. So let's get on to your, your centre centre backs then, then, then Davey. Um, oh, you do them first, right? Okay. Um, I keep forgetting that's how modern. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, no, in fact, let me do. Let me do the left back because um, left back in in my team is the only position that I've got a guy in there who I don't actually think was the best in the position that I've seen. Oh. Is that not a strange thing to say? Yeah, yeah. Um, so. I think the best left back I've seen at Rangers was Arthur Newman. Um, the the ultimate modern fullback, and um, my Christ, I don't know how many games he played for Holland, but he must have been one of the best fullbacks in Europe. Never mind, never mind Scotland. Easily, he was he was a genuine world world class player. There's not too many of them really. We we wait to kid on. There's lots of world class players, but no, 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 he, he actually he actually probably was one. And not only that, we, we actually we actually got him at the time that he was a world class player, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Did he not just play for Holland in the, the World Cup? I think he just we, played. We we signed him just when he was going to the World Cup. Yeah, he was yeah. just about to go. He was just about to go there. So he, he actually was a Rangers player when he played in '98. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then they got to, they got to the semi final. I think I'm sure he, I'm sure he played in the semi final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get beat penalties. Um, he was he was just a great player. Um, he's he's the best left back I've seen. And I'd, another one I'd like to mention is Davy Robertson, who was the, the Gary Stevens of the left hand side in, in Walter Smith's first team. 
in the early nineties, he was he was another really athletic, strong, fit, up and down the park, good defensive fullback. Uh, I really liked him. And if I go back further, there's like uh, Stuart Monroe, who was Mr. Dependable at left back. Ali Dawson, who Ali Dawson was a I think he'd have been a really good Rangers left back, but he had a really bad injury. But he when he first came into the team on a consistent basis under John Gregg, he was he, he looked as if he was going to be an absolute star for Rangers. He was, but the guy that was left back uh, for much of the seventies when I went to see Rangers has to be in this team somewhere. I've got to pick him somewhere. <laughs> uh, I could I could pick him in midfield. I could pick him at centre back, but he's just got to be in it, um, and that's John Gregg. Um, John, John Gregg's got this reputation as being this hard man. Um, this, you know, wave the fist, wave the fist at the rest of the team and get them all playing, um, run through brick walls, kind of thing. First and foremost, John Gregg was an absolutely terrific footballer. Um, he was capped by Scotland at right back, at left back, at what's now called defensive midfield and at centre back. So he was captain four different positions. He captained Scotland when Scotland with guys like Billy Bremner they could have been captain, but they made John Gregg the captain. Yeah. He was a terrific footballer. And he scored more goals for Rangers than Mark Hatley did. So, 120 goals he scored for Rangers. Um, and there's only about five or six penalties in amongst it. He was an absolute... He was a mountain of a Rangers player. Um, and every, te every team needs a captain. And there's no way my all-time Rangers team doesn't if him <laughs> as the captain. So I've just got to put him in the team. Yeah, I've got yeah. to do it. And I've decided to put him in it left back because it's easier leaving out Arthur Newman than it is leaving out somebody at centre back. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I've decided that's where he's going. Um but to be fair, um John Gris, if if you talk about Greg in his in his last season as a player, um when he gets testimonial year, to give you the idea of how highly regarded John Gregg was in when I was young. Um, Rangers won the treble that season. They played Celtic in a cup final. They played Aberdeen in a cup final. Yet the biggest crowd Rangers played in front of that season was John Gregg's testimonial. Jesus. Says it all. He was absolutely loved. Uh, and funny enough, we, another slight aside in this one. Um, he was the captain for the first, the first six years, first six seasons, he was the Rangers captain. He only lifted one domestic trophy. Celtic won almost everything. And yet Tavernier's a loser. You know, Tavernier's a loser, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But in those, six, in those six seasons, John Gregg absolutely carried Rangers some of the time. He was... The num you, you look back at the number of games Rangers played back in the late 60s and early 70s that they won 1-0 or 2-1 and John Gregg scored one of the goals in it. From defence. He was just... He was just an, it was a phenomenon. See, I didn't know that. Like, I didn't realise his his first sort of six, seven years. It was yeah. As captain, as captain, not as a player. As captain, as captain. Yeah. Uh, but, he, well, he won lots of trophies in his first bit as a player as a before he became captain in the early sixties. But um, but I suppose you don't get you know the greatest ever Ranger for, for exactly. And and he he was everything you'd want a Rangers captain to be, mm -hmm. on and off the pitch. Um, he wasn't just an inspiration on the pitch, which he absolutely was, and he dragged Rangers to wins that some of the time they weren't going without him. But one of my, I remember when I was really young, I remember the Ibrox disaster, uh, and Greg was him and Willie Waddle were the, were the two that represented the club incredibly. Won the manager, won the won the the captain. Uh, that's that's why it's his statue. It's outside. I know it's a, it's a disaster, it's a disaster start you. It's not a John Gregg start you, as I keep telling everybody. But that's who it had to be of. It had to be him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it had to be him. And then obviously Barcelona and puts the tin wooden at two trebles before he retires and all that sort of stuff. He was just he was he was just he was a force of nature as a Rangers captain. Um and I've seen a lot of really good Rangers captains, but he I, again I might see some great ones in the future as well. But will I ever probably think of him as good as John Gregg? I bet I don't. No. I bet I don't. <clears throat> no, as I said, I, you know, stories, I can only go of, of what I'm told. But um, 
yeah, I think you summed it up really well there, there Davian. And for one minute, I did think you was going to uh, was going to go with Arthur Newman, but um, <laughs> he, he must have been some player to get ahead of Newman anyway. Put it that way, because as you said, yeah. Newman was top draw. Funny enough, it's just in his last season, when I said he got his testimonial. Um, Rangers went through this really this big blip to, in the running. They were they were miles in front, and Aberdeen were started to we started dropping points, and Aberdeen actually caught us. And we played in a semi final against the United in the, in the Scottish Cup on the Wednesday night. We struggled badly in it, um, and he scored this <laughs> uh, one of these ones that chipped in, it and he just took it in his chest, and just everybody just bounced off him, and he just ran through it and battered it into the net. At Hamden, and then on the Saturday we went to Ayr. It was one each, and he done exactly the same again. He just went pummeling through the through the defence, bodies flying everywhere, and he batters it into the net again. Uh, that was some thirty-five year old for left back. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was. I'm telling you, he was a force of nature. He was what a player he was. Oh, brilliant! I wonder how much he would go for in today's game doing that. They, I love a, a goal scoring fullback, but. Um... So, then, so, so I, I take it Greg's your captain then. But um he will be my Rangers captain to probably for the rest of my days. I would imagine. I can't imagine I'll ever I'll ever think of another captain above him. I can't imagine it. No. No, no, brilliant. Uh, David said it. So then you're onto your, your two cent- central defenders. And again, I bet this is a, a tough, tough This goal. this is this is where I really struggle. I, I'm <laughs> really struggle. Do you have any idea how many really good centre backs Rangers have had in the last 50 years? <laughs> um I mean, when I, when I first went, many great regularity, there was guys like uh, Dave Smith, who was a terrific player. He was a sweeper. He was a, player, he was a sweeper before sweepers were probably invented in Scottish football. Yeah. Barcelona beer. Uh, Colin Jackson, he was a terrific, big, dependable centre-half. Um, then, <laughs> I, I, my long list that don't make the team, I'll just even say some names. I won't even talk about how good they were. You've got guys like Amoruso, Alan McLaren, um, Colin Jackson, I just mentioned, um, Quella, Bugera, they're all, ter- they're all terrific centre halves. Uh, I think Golton's not a bad centre half, actually. Um, yeah, I don't think he, I, I think he's probably the best centre half, but certainly has since we came back into the oh, yeah, absolutely. League again. Um, and I, I think in a, in a successful Rangers team a years ago, I think he would look really good, especially with the big long passes he plays. Yeah, I think yeah. I think he'd look he didn't he'd look really good in some of the old teams. I think with Goldson, Davey, it's a it's a typical one that you don't again when he was missing, we I think it it was shown how important it, he is and, and and you know has been for us over the years. Yeah, yeah. Although I think we were unlucky and it wasn't just him that was missing, there was, there was two and three <laughs> missing at one time, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're playing a, a teenager and a midfielder in Champions League games together. Jesus. Yeah. Um, so my short list, it's not very short, really. Um, <laughs> Tom Forsyth. Tom Forsyth um, in, in the 1970s was everything you'd want a centre-half to be, a central defender to be. Uh, strong in the air. What a tackler. In fact, I'm not sure I've seen a cleaner tackle play for Rangers since him. The way he could he could cleanly win the ball. With, and he was a great man marker. See if you wanted somebody to be a man marker in a game. Um, I remember I mentioned earlier on the 1975 League Cup final, Rangers beat Celtic. He was given a man marking job in Kenny Ruglish that day. And he marked Ruglish out of the game. He was the reason Rangers won that game that day, I thought. Yeah, yeah. He had this reputation for been a bit a, a clogger some of the time, but he was a terrific player for Scotland as well. Played for Scotland in a World Cup and everything. He he was he was a great good player. He started as a midfield player with Rangers and they converted him to centre back. So he was he was actually a footballer first and foremost who became this. He was, in fact, I'm still pondering whether he put Tom Forsyth in the team at the moment. <laughs> um, I liked him that much. Um, I'm going to mention Derek Johnson. All right, okay. Derek, uh, okay. Derek, Derek Johnson um, was the Barcelona centre half at 18 years old, um, which is unbelievable when you think about it now. He was actually capped by Scotland as a teenager as a centre half. Because really, I know he could play each striker, and obviously he played a lot of games centre half, but that is just so, again, just so unheard of. How, I, and, and I, I remember. Um, I remember Jock Wallace and Willie Waddle 
saying in an interview after a game about Derek Johnson that he was going to be the next Wally Woodburn, who was at that time regarded as the greatest centre-half he's ever had. Um, Derek Johnson was a tremendous centre-half. Yeah. He had he was he was quick. He read the game. And I think because he had played centre-forward already as a teenager <laughs> before he became converted to it, he knew how centre-forwards thought. He read the game so well. Uh, and he was terrific in there. Yeah. There was very, very, very few players could ever be there. He was a terrific centre half, but he didn't play there yeah. as much. Actually, he was, he was a great midfield player as well. For him. He was a <laughs> midfield. He, the, when Rangers stopped Celtic winning 10 in a row the first time, he was actually a midfield player most of that season. Uh, and he was, what, what, age, what age was he then? He was in 19 or 20, something like that. Um, he was ridiculous. I'll I'll get back to him, but I'm going to put he's in my short list in two different yeah. positions. Yeah. He was my boyhood hero. Um Davy Weir. Yeah. There's another yeah. one in the short list. Um I think the big biggest compliment I can pay Davy Weir is that every partner he ever had always looked good. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. think he was one of these guys, he was such a good organizer, he was such a good reader of the game that he made other players better round about him. That is a sign of a top, top player, that. Exactly that, David. Um, I really liked him. I know we got him really late in his career. Um, 37? Oh, oh, Jesus. I mean, um, he must have been getting towards that. He was 36 anyway, I would have thought. But, um, Chris, he was was organised a defence to keep a a shutout at Old Trafford at nearly 41 year old. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I really liked him. I thought he was a good captain as well. Oh, I thought, yeah. it, was a, I thought it was a very good... So he's he's in the short list. Um, I mentioned Amoruso, he's not. Uh, another player I really liked is actually John Brown. John Brown? Yeah, John, yeah. John Brown um, was, a, was a midfield player converted into a... And, and as a left-sided centre-back, he was he was a revelation. I, I remember when he got converted, we were all saying, what the hell is he doing playing John Brown here? Um, he he was one he was one of the big reasons why we knew we got to the Champions League final. Yeah, uh, he was he was a terrific defender. Was what was he signed as a, a left back, David? Originally, he, he was actually a midfield player with Indy, but he'd been a, he'd been a left back before that with Hamilton Ackies. Um He first came to the team as a midfield player. He played left back for a while. Um, he kind of utility midfield defender, and then suddenly became this this. Centre back, and he was—he was a terrific centre back. So, but my my top three. In fact, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll start with the one that's definitely in the team. There's one that's definitely in the team because I think he's the best centre back I've ever seen at Rangers. Yeah, and that's Terry Butcher. Oh, right, Terry Butcher. Yeah, T- Terry Butcher. Um, I talked about the way Chris Woods changed everything, goalkeeping wise. Butcher changed everything as well when he came. He was a great—he was a great leader. He was another great captain. I've got a lot of great captains in this team for now. All captains. But, <laughs> well, <laughs> so far. I mean, they are all captains, actually. Um, but, but Butcher was just a terrific player. Um, he had a great left foot on him. He was a great passer of the ball for now. See, we talk about Golton's long passing. Yeah, yeah. Remember, um, what was, it? was it? Was it McCoyst? Was it McCoyst or David Cooper described um, Terry Butcher's left foot as the Winchester? Because it was like a, a rifle that could... <laughs> long, long range rifle that could find it, find the target. Um, great organizer, great uh, tackler, great near. Popped up with the odd goal up on the other, the other end. But for, first and foremost, a terrific. He was England captain when they got to semi final of the World Cup. For Christ's sake, he was he was a tremendous player. Um, he's kind of tainted his reputation with the Rangers support since since he since he left, obviously. But if I just talk about. Who's the best central defender you've seen? It's it's Terry Butcher. Terry Butcher's the best. And if I think about um, that first season under Sunus, um, oh, Graham Roberts arrived later on, but Butcher was playing in central defence beside Dave McPherson or Ali Dawson or Craig Patterson or Roberts later on. He he was the Rangers defence, and it was it was Butcher plus three others. Yeah, for, eight, for ages. Um, and actually, I think it was really telling the next year when he broke his leg. Um, the one year we didn't win the league with him there. Um, 
Goff and Roberts played together the second half of that season because Butcher had broke his leg. And neither of the two of them looked anywhere near as good without him than they did together. Yeah. Goff and Butcher were a great partnership. Roberts and Butcher were a great partnership. But none but those two without him, nothing like it. Nothing like it. Um, so, yeah, t- Terry Butcher's in there. Um, a lot, of, a lot of people don't like him now. And a lot of people, I think, a lot of people don't put them in the in, his, in the team because of him, not because of how, how good a player he was. But, but I actually feel like this is happening a little bit with with Barry Ferguson, David. Uh, I mean, for the younger generation, uh, again, I, I, I don't, you know, don't want to know your midfielders, but um, <laughs> especially me, I grew up absolutely idolising Barry Ferguson. But I feel like people are starting to resent him now because of his media work, some yeah. of the comments he makes. Yeah. And they're doing exactly that. They're going, no, I don't, I don't, you know. Like, it, yeah, you know I, mean, I mean, Butcher said something in his book about Cooper that I think a lot of people will never forgive him for. Um, and then when he bloody well posed with jelly and ice cream when they played Celtic one time in 2012, when we were going through administration, I think a lot of people decided that he was just, they never want to see him again, never mind anything else. But if I'm just doing if I'm just doing this simply as yeah. what eleven would I pick of players that I've watched play for Rangers, he's the best centre half I've seen. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Um not my captain though. Um <laughs> so the obvious player to play beside him is Richard Gov. Yeah. Um an absolute warrior. A complete warrior. Um in fact, the number of times you saw him and Butcher with head cuts back in the days, you were allowed to play with blood streaming down your down your head. Um, Goff was a, another great leader. Um, he was actually a fullback within D United when I, when I first saw him. He was a right back. Uh, Hager and Neri were the centre backs. I think he was a terrific right back. And when he first came to Rangers, I was actually wondering if Sunus was going to play him at right back. Although he'd been centre back for Tottenham uh, when, we, when we brought him. My captain is in the nine in a row team. It was golf, golf was Walter Smith on the park, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So yeah. Smith, Smith might have gave them their instructions, and they, but out on that field, they had a leader. He was, he was, he was a wonderful, inspirational player. Um, it's, it's just again, I, you I know, you, you've touched on it there, Davy, about you know, we took the England, English captain, um, you know. In Butcher, the English goalkeeper, the English fullbacks, um, yeah. but then to get Richard Goff, and I just think about you know nowadays, and again, it's not, it's never, it's not going to happen. We're not going to go and get no. a, ter- uh, a Richard Goff from Tottenham. Do you know what I mean? It's no, like, well, but funny, we, we wanted him for the United, and they wouldn't sell. Yeah, um, yeah. But back then, we could then just say, well, okay, go to Tottenham, we'll just buy him off him. Yeah. <laughs> that, which, is, which is mental. Um, I'll be honest. I've been pondering all day whether to make Tom Forsyth or Richard Goff Terry Butcher's partner. Really? Is that the... Is that the I've, I've eventually went with Goff, but um, there, was, there was a little period in Richard Goff's Rangers career but that I think he had a bit of a sticky time. Um, around about 94-ish, um, he was... He was starting to lose a wee bit of his pace. Maybe it's because he was he was there so long. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But what, what Walter ended up doing was he moved to a back three. Goff, Goff on a back four was, was getting exposed too much. Right. And he, and see when he moved back to the three again, a back to three centre backs, and they like they like Goff just go and win the ball and somebody else was sweep up behind him. He was he was a he was a giant again. Um yeah, but it's got to be it's got to be Goff, but I feel terrible leaving Tom Forsyth out, but you, you, you can't you can't have a back five in this team, I'm afraid. There's, there's too many attackers to, to fit five defenders, isn't it? <laughs> See, I thought uh, I did I did uh, didn't I didn't know Butcher was going to be in there. I'll be honest, but I did when I looked at this. I thought oh, Goff's, Goff's going to be in there. But, um, I, I genuinely think a lot of people rate him higher than Butcher because of after football rather than if they just. So, Take all emotion away from him. Just look at the two football players. Yeah, yeah, Butcher, was, yeah. Butcher was a better centre half than Richard Goff was. Yeah, no. in my in my opinion, yeah. <laughs> I know it's all about opinion. Yeah, um, yeah. Goff was a greater range. Was a better ranger. Mm-hmm. If you just talk about a, a Rangers player, Goff was a ranger far more than Terry Butcher was. But Butcher was a better football player. Yeah, 
yeah no uh, definitely and uh again get get your uh you know, listeners and, and viewers, get your comments in on, on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've probably yeah. annoyed. I've probably... <laughs> no, 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 not at all. But uh, let's get on to your midfield then, then Davey. Um... So I'm only going to two central midfield players. Right, yeah. Um, I don't know if this is a 4-2-4 four, four or something. I don't, I don't know. It doesn't, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because they would beat anybody anyway, so it doesn't actually matter. <laughs> um, picking, because I've decided and going with two wingers and two forwards. It'd be any idea how difficult it was to pick just two midfield players. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's absolutely, I mean, it's, it's horrendous. <laughs> um, I'll quickly talk about some players who don't even make the short list. Right? So, oh. Bobby Russell. So, probably he were before your time. Bobby Russell came into the team in the, in the late 70s, straight for junior football. And he, in my view, in his first season at Rangers, he was the best player in Scotland. And he, he, he came into the Rangers team at the same time as David Cooper. And for the first two, three seasons, I thought Bobby Russell was a far better Rangers player than David Cooper was. He was sensational. He, he made Rangers tick. He was, he was the man that actually made Rangers tick for those, those two or three seasons. He was an elegant, clever midfielder who, who could also go forward and score the odd, the odd goal. He was a terrific player. But he's not good enough for this team. <laughs> um, no, no, he no. didn't even make the bench actually. Um, then there's Sunis, of course. Now we, now we got him too late. His, yeah. his best days as a player were obviously behind him. But you could you could still see what a footballer he was. Um, he was by the time he got to Rangers, his his discipline was wasn't the best. Let's be honest. He, <laughs> He sometimes got to got to tackles at ten seconds a bit later than he should have done. Um, but what a passer of the ball! My God, what a passer of the ball he was! And he he intimidated other players. Yeah. See, see if you if you if you just hit him in the middle of the park, other 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 teams feared you before the, the game even started because of yeah. because of how good he was. Uh, if it was as soon as a Liverpool, probably would be in this team, but as soon as the Rangers isn't. No. Um, and another guy we got probably too late just after that was Ray Wilkins. Ray Wilkins was a yeah. Oh, he was he was one of these uh, sort of poetry in motion type players. He just done things simple, kept kept the ball moving, uh, very rarely gave it away. Uh, and we we talked about um, David Weir made players better round about him. Wilkins made players round about him better. Yeah, because he, he always he always found them just when, at the right time when they were in the right space he would find them. Uh, he wasn't there long enough. Uh, he he'd slowed down a bit by the time we got him, but he was he was a, a great player. Um, then there's the two central midfield players for much of the nine or oh years. Uh, Ian Ferguson. Yeah. Uh, Ian Ferguson when he first came to Rangers was a dynamic attacking midfield player. He scored quite a few goals. Is it St. Mary and Dyley? Yeah, he, he, scored the, he scored the only goal in the cup final for St. Man a couple yeah. of years before we got him um, as a teenager. But in the first season in nine in a row, he, he scored quite a few goals that season. Quite a few. He scored a lot of opening goals for him. He, scored, you see, he opened the scoring in quite a few games, if I remember right. But he was a dynamic, forward thinking, attacking midfield player. And he completely changed the way he played the game because Rangers needed it. Yeah. So what Walter Smith created not long after that was was a team that very much um, had your loud ups, your Mark Walters, or well, Walters and the Smith, but um, Hateway, McCoyst. There was these forward players who were tasked with scoring goals, and basically behind them there was this curtain that was to make sure that nothing could get through them. And Ian Ferguson became this enforcer. In the middle of the park, and he was bloody good at that as well. <laughs> um, I always feel that he kind of sacrificed how good he was a little bit for really? the overall for the overall good of the team. Yeah, um, I love the uh, I love the clip with the cameo. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, top draw. Yeah, F F Ferguson took no shit. It's a simple, it's a simple <laughs> um, yeah. and beside him, Stuart McCall. Stuart McCall was another little buzz bomb up player. He was. He was covered every blade of grass, won tackles, 
gave the ball. He delights a gas coin beside him, so give it to Gascoigne, protect him, win, win the ball, give it back to him again. Yeah. Chipped him with the odd goal, but didn't he score that many? He was he was a bloody good player for Scotland as well, Stuart yeah. McCall. Um, he won, did he not win the FA Cup with Everton before coming to... Uh, he, he scored twice in the final, but they get beat. Yeah, that's it, yeah. yeah. Uh, Liverpool beat them 3-2, the hell of the year, Hillsborough. Um, yeah, but he was, he was a terrific player. I think he was very underrated, Stuart McCall. Yeah, yeah. He, he's a he's done a job for that team that when he wasn't there, you know, nobody really done it. Yeah. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, so who else isn't in the shot? Of Stephen Davis. Um, yeah. Okay. Stephen okay. Davis is another fantastic player. Um, now one of these keep it simple, let the ball do the work. But like, but like Wilkins was the the ball does the work. You don't need to do it. Um, Lovely football player, uh, and I, I had big influence in those round about him as well. Um, I think the '55 season, when I thought he was getting past it before that season had started. Yeah, so did I. He just suddenly became. It was almost like watching him when he was 25 again. He, he yeah. was, he was fantastic. He, he, he's really, really changed the game as well, didn't he, Stephen Davis? Davey, in terms of that '55 season, from what we were used to. Mm. You know, and it doesn't get spoken about enough how good he was that year. Obviously, we what happened because we went into administration, the points deductions, mm. um, and 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 we were ten. I think we were we were not ten points clear, and then you know we fluffed it. But there was all rumours going around. You could tell it affected. But he well, was unbelievable that year. That was the year he was the captain. The yeah, year he was the captain. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was he was one that he. Get, Wasted is the wrong word, but he played wide out in the right quite a lot when he first came to Rangers because it suited the system we had. And you'd, you'd guys like uh, Kevin Thompson, players, players in the mid, yeah. Lee McCulloch occasionally in the, in the centre of the midfield, yeah. when he would actually probably be more of a midfield general than they were. Yeah. Um, but once once he moved into the centre of the, of the park, you could, you could you could see he was a he was a he was a, he was a, he was a proper football player. I mean, hundred odd caps. I know Northern Ireland is not the same as playing for England. They're playing for Spain or something like that. But he's he's an absolute model professional as well. He's 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 the kind of guy that you'd, you'd want in a dressing room. Again, yeah. we, we spoke about it earlier, David. The standards and a proper range. Absolutely, absolutely. Ticks, ticks that box definitely. Absolutely. So that takes me to my, my the one the ones that I, that are that I'm deciding two from. So it's actually two from five I've ended up with. Yeah. Um, Alberts. Loved Alberts. First everybody, everybody loved Alberts. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't know of it. Apart from Dick Advocate, occasionally, everybody loved Alberts. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what? What, what a big game goal scorer! Let's see if you talk about big game goal scorers. Um, Wow, he was he was right up there. Um, it's not even a, the big game uh, goal scorer, David. It was the goals he scored in the big game. Do you know what I mean? It was like the, yeah, the, the, the goals he the, that left foot was just. I'm not know. seen one like it since. I, I don't think I've ever seen any Rangers player score as many spectacular goals as he did. No. And all the time I've, I've seen Rangers. Um, as I say, done it in Europe, done it in no firm games, done it, done it everywhere you need it. Yeah. Um, he was a very good passer of the ball, actually. People that people that tend to just talk about his power and his shooting, he was actually a very clever passer. Of the see if you look back to a lot of old games, you see the number of assists that he had. That he's the guy that that played the ball through to the forward. Um, he wasn't the hardest working player in the team, which was probably why Advocate occasionally didn't play him. But he was he was a he was a great Rangers player. I really liked him. And then. The guy you talked to earlier on, Barry Ferguson. Barry Ferguson, um, Leverkusen when he was 20. I don't know if that's before your time or not. Uh, but, um, I, I, obviously, at the time, I didn't, but I've gone back and watched it. I, I, I got to a point, David, when uh, I was, I used to play uh, uh, for Colchester United. I got released at 18. So w- there was a time when I was 15, 16, where I was just totally... Ferguson was just, he was playing mm. for some time, captain. It was 2008 season where we went to Manchester and I just went back and watched games and, and then my dad and granddad had loads of videos and one of the, the videos I had was the Leverkusen game. 
Yeah. And because I've heard him talk about it, I was like, I'm going to go back and watch it. And yeah, 20 years old Champions League. Um, that was it. Uh, the Matthias, the Mate- was it Matthias? He played. No, uh, 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 Weber Cousin was the was Advocates first season. It was a UEFA Cup game. Yeah, I can't. Who's the? Who, I can't remember who's the player he was playing oh, against. Though he poked him in the yeah. eye. Was it? I'm sure. Yeah. I can't remember. Oh, yeah, um, Matthias played for Bayern, didn't he? Oh, was that Bayern? But but I can't. I can't anyway, he had he had the he had the ump with Ferguson. But yeah, he was. Uh, there, there was one up. one bit. The bit you always remember in the game was he he had the he was running towards his own goal. And he suddenly turned and pirouetted and went the other way, and, and the whole German defence went, went went past him. And all of a sudden, he was in all these acres of space. Um, Ferguson was a, was a truly international class midfield player. No, he was he was an he was a really top. In fact, I still think um, if you talk about this century from two thousand onwards, I don't think Scotland's had a better footballer than Barry Ferguson. No, I think he's I the best Scot the best Scottish footballer. Yeah, I'd say in, in that thing. Anywhere near his talent since him. Um, yeah, and, and I, I speak about I spoke this because I think everyone I've done so far, <clears throat> and I hopefully don't go out before this one, but I think I've got Ferguson in them. And um and, the, and 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 what I always talk about, David, with Ferguson is I always say the same thing, I'm repeating myself, but frustratingly he went to Blackburn at the time. Mm. I think he could have done a lot better than Blackburn. Um, yeah. Yeah, about the first, the, the, big, the biggest frustration I've got about Barry Ferguson's career is actually before that. Right. Um, when Rangers were going for 10 in a row, we brought in Reno Gattuso. Yeah. At 18-year-old or whatever it was, yeah. and played him for the majority of that season. We had 19-year-old Barry Ferguson in the reserves for most of that season. Yeah. And I, my personal view <laughs> is that if, we, if, if Walter had been brave enough to play Barry Ferguson in the ne- in the ten in a row season instead of Rio Gattuso, I think we'd have won the league. Oh, there's a take I've not heard before. Interesting. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Well, you, you said so. You said though, but 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 Gattuso wasn't there long, David, was he? Um, no, he he was away. He almost stayed the one season, really. He yeah. was away near, near the start of the following season. So yeah, why why not? Um, and you know you know the the story I've said. Yeah, yeah. What it's crazy. Know? It's crazy. It's crazy me saying this when I'm talking about a guy that won the bloody World Cup in the Champions League and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. I just think at that particular time, with Rangers have been a team that had to win games to win trophies. Yeah, a 19 year old Scott playmaking well, midfield player would have been better than a foreign 18 year old defensive midfield destroyer. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I absolutely agree. And as I say, uh, advocate what he done when he. You know, when he come in, he, he he more or less said, "Right, you're you're going to be the main man." Yeah. Um, so he, he showed that faith that maybe Smith didn't at that time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Ferguson was, I'm sure, uh, he will make a lot of teams, especially younger guys. Yeah, yeah. I would have thought. Um, and he, if if I had only seen Rangers in the last twenty five years, Ferguson would be my team. Yeah, yeah. It's as simple as that. Um. But it all, it's all going to boil down to three players. Right. And I've still not made my mind up who one of them is going to be. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to tell you who's definitely in it. And then I'll I'll make my mind up as we go. Um, the first player that I would put in my midfield will undoubtedly surprise you. Because, well, I think it will surprise you. It's Alec McDonald. No, it doesn't really. It, um, again, uh, I'll before, but Alan McDonald was the engine of the Great Rangers team of the 1970s. Um, if you look at all the cup finals Rangers played in from 1970 to 1979, the only player that, pl- that started every one of them was Alan McDonald. Um, when I talked about Stuart McCall covered every blade of grass, that's what Alan McDonald did. But he didn't just win tackles, he didn't just pass the ball. Alan McDonald scored goals that Alberts did in big games. Not not the same kind of goals as Alberts did. Yeah, yeah. He scored goals in big European ties. He scored goals in no firm games. He scored goals in cup. In fact, I think he scored something like four cup final goals in four years. Two in the League Cup final, two in the Scottish Cup final. And almost like in four almost successive seasons. Um, he was a he was an absolute hero, man. 
and he's another one that um, he probably ran through a brick wall as well. Um, if if things were going badly, his head would not go down. He would just try all the harder. And I I, I think if I'm going to film the rest of my team through all these great footballers, I need I need that in my midfield as well. But he'll score goals in it as well. <laughs> he don't really He's not just there to defend. Alan McDonald is my favourite Rangers midfield player. Oh, all right. No, that's not that's good. I say, um, obviously, a bit before, but Mark, you know, I say from family, the granddad has, has spoke about him ever so highly. Um, the, the I watched recently watched the we're talking about Amazon again. I feel like we've been talking yeah. about them, but the seventy two uh, documentary and uh, he's you know the, again how everyone well, sort of speaks of him and that as well. Well, if, I, if you even if you talk about seventy two. Um, there was two of the earlier rounds that we we won two one in aggregate against Rena France and Torino Italy. Um, we won both the home legs. We would we drew one each away from home, and then we won one 0 at Ibrox in the second game. He scored the only goal both those games. Really? <clears throat> yeah. So he just he just popped up and scored goals. He scored against Juventus. He scored against PSV Eindhoven. He scored against Ajax. He scored against Borussia Mönchengladbach. Gladbach. Scored against an and he scored against. They were all they were all big teams in the seventies. Some of them aren't big teams anymore. Yeah. Um, plus, I say he scored in Scottish Cup finals, League Cup finals. Scored winners against Celtic. He was he, he was the, the ultimate all round midfield player for yeah. me. The, if you ask all the things that a midfield player could do, ball winning, passing, stamina, fitness, goals, teamwork, character, he just get them all. I just, I just think he's living, yeah. and it's a total coincidence that he's wrote the forward for my new book as well. He doesn't know, he doesn't know I'm doing this. Um, that leaves me with other two. Oh God, and I'm still trying to. <laughs> do you know what? I'm going to do something controversial. I get it. Love it. Yeah. So the the guy who almost makes the team and doesn't is Paul Gascoigne. Cool. Oh, See, I, I, when I've, I've got a couple of names written down, who I thought, think you might put in, he's one that I thought uh, David will pick him. No, you know what? As a footballer, he's the best midfield player I've ever seen at Rangers. Wow. As a footballer. Yeah. As someone who could control a ball coming up from any angle, who could suddenly see a pass that nobody else sees. Mm -hmm. As a footballer, there's no other midfielder in this, a midfielder in this list that could do that. Uh, and he scored a lot of big goals as well. And I find it really hard not to put him in the team because it, he was what a footballer he was. I mean, he was he was he was. In, I'm struggling to think actually of of a better English footballer that I've ever seen. I'm, I'm actually sitting there and thinking, was was he better? Pro, than... pro, pro, probably England. There's probably guys my age picking an England eleven and he's in it, and I'm not even putting him in the bloody Rangers one. <laughs> <laughs> was, he, was he better than uh, Ger was he, Ger Obviously, the Gerard and Lampard one, the skulls, skulls. Ah, he was a, he was a better footballer than. Them. He's a more, nat more naturally gifted, yeah. talented footballer than them. Uh, he wasn't as dedicated. He wasn't he, no. he, professional. But the thing, the thing that's slightly put me off putting Gascon in is, if I think back in the really, we only really got about a season and a half out of him. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's the second half of his second season and more of his only the other season. He was he was starting to miss games. He was starting to miss training. He was he, he was still showing the odd flash of genius, but he wasn't the player he had been in the first eighteen months. Yeah. So in effect, there's that little wait eighteen month period that he was an absolute bloody genius. Yeah. But the reason I'm not putting him in, I think I'm not putting him in. I might put him. Out, I might put him back in a minute. The reason I'm not putting him in is I think. Ian Durant deserves to go in it. Yeah. Um, and it's a real, because I've only picked two bloody midfield players, it means I can't do the three of them. Yeah. Um, Ian Durant, before he got injured, I think was going to be a, every bit as big as Gascoigne bended up being. Um, I, remember, I, I remember Ray Wilkins talking about him. When Wilkins joined Rangers, he went on some interview and TV and he basically said he's now he's playing beside in the midfield at Rangers, the best young midfield player he's ever played beside. 
uh, and that was injured. Right? And, and, and he had, Wilkins played for some big, big clubs as well, didn't he? Yeah. See, he said he was the best young midfield player he'd ever played with. I don't know what young meant in the back then. Maybe that was under 21 or something. I don't know. But Durant, before he got his injury, was again one of these guys who could do everything. He, yeah. he had this great knack of getting beyond his forwards and getting into the box and scoring goals. But he was also terrific pass of the ball. Although he was quite slight, he could he could win it. He could stand up for himself. He could take care of himself. He was scoring big goals at 19. He scored, he scored in the week up front against Celtic at 19. And that was a few weeks after he had scored the only goal against him in the league as well. Um, but then when he got his injury, when I think... Never mind Rangers. Scotland were robbed of possibly a, of a, an absolutely generational player. I think he was a generational player. It, um, there, there was rumours that, that summer before... Was there not maybe a couple of uh, European clubs interested in Durant? I'm sure I've read. Uh, well, they didn't. They didn't mean mad not to be watching him. <laughs> so, yeah. Honestly, um, the, see the the League Cup final. We drew three each. We Aberdeen won in penalties. 1987. If you ever watch that, if you ever got a chance to watch that game, Durant was the best player in the park by a mile that day. Yeah. That, that's as good a cup final performance as I can ever remember. See, he was. Phenomenal. And then um after he got his injury, I mean, it took it took about three years for him to come back. I mean, yeah. God almighty, it took forever. Uh, I remember we going to a reserve game when he came back against Hibs, it was about twenty five thousand at that. that's how much he was he was he was loved within sport. Um he wasn't the same dynamic player after that, no. but he was still a terrific footballer. Yeah. And that that year that we we beat Leeds and we well, played Marseille and we got... He, he was the midfield player that stood out. Yeah. Um, I remember the, the game down at Leeds, um, although H- Hateway and uh, McCoy scored the goals and Gorham was brilliant in goal, Durant, as as the footballer in the team, stood out like a beacon that night. He was, he was fantastic. And then if I think about the length, the length of Rangers career it had, the things that he won... How good a player he was. I mean, he scored in three different League Cup finals, for example. Yeah. Um, I just want him in there. And I think the young the young Durant and Alec McDonald together would be one hell of a pair in the midfield if I've only got two. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I want to talk about how good Durant, <laughs> Durant was, Davy, but that tackle's a shocker, isn't it? It's, it's, oh. it's the pit, it's the, it's the, the pitch, don't, it's just, it's, yeah, it's don't, terrible. Don't get, don't get me started on that. That's. Yeah. That, that's that was that was just assault. I mean, there, there's yeah. yeah, there's no way that Neil Simpson didn't mean to injure him. Yeah, he yeah, meant well, to injure him. Yeah. Uh, and I, 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 I'll, to this day, I'll never understand why why he would want to do that. No, shocking, shocking. As I say, uh, so I need a little drink. My voice is getting a bit. No. No. So there you go, Alan McDonald and Ian Durant in midfield. No Gaza till, till at least later on tonight when I change my mind again. <laughs> no, but I can't can't argue with your two your two picks there. Not not at all, uh, David. I said I like you're going for a little bit. You're going for a proper. You know, you've not picked your team from. You you're thinking about this and, and how it's going to line up as well. Absolutely love it. But um, moving on to your your two uh, wide men then, David. Wide men. There's another young man's expression. <laughs> <laughs> Wingers, you mean? Um, when I when I talk when I talk about wingers, I think Rangers as a club have been really fortunate over the years to have some absolutely bloody incredible wingers. My my dad used to talk about all oh, these great players that I never really saw, and I'm thinking, and then I, there's all, can I do these other ones on as well? Yeah, Many great wingers must be I had. You know, he he would talk about Willie Waddle and Will Henderson and David Wilson. And he's like, Geez. So when I first went to, to see Rangers, um, Henderson was still there, but I didn't really see him that much. Mm-hmm. So I can't really include him. Similarly with Willie Johnson, who was the left winger the, when I first went to see Rangers. But he wasn't there that long either before I, I didn't become a regular to about 72, 73, and he was just, he was kind of away by then. Um, if I talk about wingers that I liked watching, um, you wouldn't have Bobby McKean. You know with Bobby McKean? He was a winger signed by Jock Wallace in the 70s. He did 
he only played for Rangers for three years. Um, he was a huge part of the team that stopped Celtic winning um, 10 in a row, 74-75. He was a clever, tricky, skillful little, little winger. You could beat a guy with hardly any space on about him. Good cross of the ball. Um, unfortunately, he, he died um, age 25 um, when he was still a Rangers player. Really? Yeah. Um, he died in 1978. He, he, he'd, a, he'd a big career, I thought, still in front of him. And un <laughs> unfortunately, I, he's no one to ever get me to get into greatest teams or anything like that, but I, I think he could have been a, a really good longer term Rangers Long. winger. Yeah. But, but unfortunately, circumstances stopped it happening. Uh, if I talk about recent wingers, I like Neil McCann. I thought Neil McCann was a terrific yeah, player. Great old it's very good crosser of the ball. Um, yeah. Always think of Loving Cran's last minute cup yeah. final goal when I think of Neil McCann's crosses. Um, products, wasn't it? Neil McCann. He always seemed to get an in products, which you don't always, well, we know it with, with uh, well, Rangers wingers. <laughs> <in recent times. laughs> yeah. Uh, one that I really liked, but he wasn't there anywhere near long, was actually a local. I thought a local was brilliant to watch. Um, he was only there for about what six months or something. It was less than a full season. It was, yeah, I think so. Yeah, he, he arrived in that season that we went into administration. Yeah. Um, and he paid, did he not have to pay himself? To yeah, I think he did. And I remember, yeah, was he was he was he no Freed Barberdeen or something? I remember when he when he when he when he joined, he was like, What the hell are we bringing a guy in that's no good enough for Aberdeen? I said exactly the same. I thought he was, I thought he was terrific. Yeah. Um, he just wasn't. He wasn't there long enough, and it's another one. If we hadn't been in the administration, if we stayed in the Premier League, and he'd stayed at Rangers for another four, five, six years, I think he could have been a cracking player. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, but obviously, um, I know yeah. Ryan Kent. Ryan Kent's the one you're alluding <laughs> yeah. to earlier on. Well, he's the only winger we've had for the last four years. <laughs> I know. Um, he's just straight in as hell. Um, on his day, I think he's terrific, but his day doesn't happen often enough. Um, so, I've got four wingers to pick from, basically. Um, so, the, the two that aren't making the team, Tommy McLean. Right. Tommy McLean, he was the right winger for most of the 1970s. Um, undoubtedly, the best crosser of a ball I've ever seen. Without doubt. Um, the most accurate crosser of a ball I've ever seen. And see if... If 1970s football had um, its obsession with stats that it does now, Tom McLean would probably be still the all-time assist leader for Rangers. Um, you would not believe the number of goals that he created. Um, mainly played in the right wing, but he had two good feet. Um, so yeah, he didn't just, it wasn't just crosses and headers. He, he was one of these places he, he could find a runner in the box with a yeah. through ball and stuff like that as well. Very, very clever football. He played well into his 30s and he sort of became a midfielder for a while before he before he retired. Uh, what a football brain he had. Um, so Tom McLean, great player. A player that I absolutely loved. And I think it's a wee bit unlucky how he's remembered as Mark Walters. And the reason I think he's unlucky is because the two wingers are half picked. He came in between them, right. which is going to be David Cooper and Brian Loudrop. So, I think in any, I'm going to talk about in, in any other club, if Mark Walters had done what he did for Rangers for any other club for those three or four years, he'd be in most other clubs <laughs> all the time. Eleven, he was sensational. Um, two footed, fast. Really skillful, very direct, scored a lot of goals, scored big goals, and didn't mind getting stuck in either. He yeah. he'd a bit he had a bit of devilment about him. He'd a, he'd a, he didn't take nonsense for fullbacks, he would give it back. Yeah. Never had I really like Mark Walters. He only left because of the the three four in the room right. when, when Walter took over. In fact, I genuinely think if Walters had still been a Rangers player in 1992-93, we would have got to the Champions League final. Yeah. Sliding doors. Why yeah. That? It's just no... That's not a criticism of the... Like Peter Houstra and uh, Mikhail Lachenko and guys were, were playing in the left, but I think if he'd played in the left with McCoyston Haitley, 
I, I think that that would have been too potent for any for anyone to deal with. Yeah. Um, so Walters, I loved him, but I loved the other two even more. Yeah, it's as simple as that. And to be honest, you can you can choose who you want to put in the right, who you want to put in the left. It doesn't actually matter. Yeah. Um, Cooper. <laughs> Cooper. Cooper was just a genius. Um, inconsistent. Um, unappreciated for a while as well. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, I felt unappreciated mostly by his manager. When John Gregg became manager, Cooper was dropped far too often. Um, I think because John Gregg played left back behind him and didn't like all the work he had to do because Cooper never tracked back. I think that's probably what it was. Yeah, yeah probably. Um, but what a left foot. My God, what a left foot. Um, One. <laughs> yeah. It almost had the same power as Albert's one, but it had the, it had the touch that... I'm was, I was going to say Messi, but maybe that's an exaggeration. But it, had, <laughs> it was it was like that. It, he could he could just do things with a, with a ball that he, he was in a he was in a wavelength that he had to have good players on the bottom, but it was wasted. <laughs> it was just and it was wasted for years. To be honest with you, um, but you, you, you say about his uh, his left foot. What was the was it a League Cup final against Aberdeen? David, where the, the, the free kick when it, it literally hits the net and it flies straight back out. It was just yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, he was. He was what? Not only was it was he a, not only was a great winger. I actually think, if I had been David Cooper's manager, I would have tried to turn him into a number ten. Right. He wasn't right. quick. He wasn't particularly quick. He could be, he could beat players. Don't get me wrong. He was so skillful. He could still get round them. Still get crosses in, etc. Yeah, yeah. But I thought he was so good a player, he was wasted out wide quite a lot. Maybe it's an eight game, Davey. Well, see, yeah. see, the, see the position that Beale plays uh, Kent and yeah. encourages them to go in field, encourages them to get in the box. If Cooper played in a role with that, I think he would have been absolutely unplayable. I really yeah. do. Uh, he had a, he just had, His vision was amazing. He, he saw things so quickly. And if you ever see the goal uh, Ian Durant scored against Celtic, uh, 1986 at Ibrox and Rangers won 1 0. Um, soon as his first league game against them, when the ball comes out of the sky and Cooper takes it one way and sort of back flicks it the other way, the Ranger Ant was running behind him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's one of the things that if, is, is that, if, that, if, if a Messi had done it, that would, it would, it would, it would be, they'd be drawn about it ever since. Is, is that a, it's not the same goal, Davey, is it, the, where Durant scores and Cooper stands and he runs That's past it. That's it. That's it. He totally blanks him. Um, <laughs> C C Cooper was, he was too good not to be in this team. He was just too good. He was inconsistent. There was a period in the, especially in the early 80s when I think his head went down a bit. He wasn't, he was getting dropped and, and, and I don't think he thought he managed or believed in him. He was still, turn, he was still turning some brilliant performances, but I think it kind of took Jot Wallace to come back for him to really get back to his best again. Because yeah. Wallace absolutely believed in him. In fact, when Wallace came back, it was the team every week was Cooper plus ten. Yeah. He was his first name in his team sheet, so uh, he has to be there. And similarly, Loudrop, Loud, Loudrop was, in my humble opinion, the consistently best footballer I've ever seen in Scottish football. If you talk about, it, he's just done it almost every game. It was it was ridiculous how good he was. Some of the clips, Davey, it's like it is men against boys, is it? I mean, and everyone talks about how skillful he was, which he undoubtedly was, but he was a big guy as well. He, you know, he, he sort of glided over the ground and he, players, defenders would bounce, unlike Cooper who had to actually beat players, they would just bounce off him sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as I said, again, two great feet. Um, I think Loudrop's one of these guys who could have played anywhere across the forward line. Yeah. And he'd, he'd been good at it. Yeah. Um, he was, he was, Ah, yeah, it's impossible not to put him in. And again, that's what I see. I say I feel sorry for some other players because I think I just think there's there's some players that John Gregg was, my, was one of my other ones that no matter who else comes along, I can't see me ever putting someone else in as my captain. No matter who else comes along, I can't see me ever not having Brian Lauder in my top. I, mean, just, I just can't see it. Yeah, I, I think he would make every 
best 11, apart from the younger. So anyone yeah. that's see him, even if you see him for a season, season and a half, I still think you, you'd pick him. I think he, he's that good. Well, um, my old, my old man went to first Sea Rangers in 1947, I think it was. Um, and his all-time team, a bit like me, a lot of it came from back, back in the day. Um, but despite the fact of how much he loved uh, guys like Davey Wilson, Johnny Hubbard, Wally Johnson, there was only one left winger for him and his team. And that's he, he, in fact, he actually said, same as I did, he's consistently the best player I've ever seen. Really, yeah. Jesus. Part Faye, along with Jim Baxter, of course, for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Baxter yeah. was this hero. So there's my two wingers. I don't think there's any surprise who the two wingers are, to be honest, is there? No, no. I think, yeah, again, I think if I was to pick out two, David, I think I would have uh, would have riddled it down to, to them too. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm probably going to be pretty predictable from now on, actually. Um, no, I don't know. I don't know. I think there, there might be a curveball coming with your, your two strikers. Um. So two up front. Um, again, I was just too late to see the best of Colin Steen. Um, I did see a bit of him because he, he came back. Um, but he scored scored the goal that won the league the first time I, I saw Rangers win the league. So I can't really include him. That fairness in the seventies there was Derek Parlane though. Derek Derek Parlane was a yeah. terrific centre forward. Scored he must have scored more than hundred goals for Rangers. Um, in fact, he he committed. He was only about, I think he was eighteen. When he played against Bayern Munich in midfield, and he moved him up front at nineteen. And he was he scored twenty odd goals, scored in the cup final. I, I remember going to the game at the film and he scored five goals. And he, he was he was a tr tremendous centre forward, and yet wasn't even the best centre forward at the club at the time. Um, That's the thing. Whenever he <laughs> Eric Farlane, I, I think that that's what I think. He, Obviously, you know, as I said from documentaries talking about the Barca seventy two, he was obviously a top player. But we, we've had so there were so many good strikers over that time that he just well, he gets yeah. overlooked. If I I'll, if I quickly just throw a few names in of players that I've liked, but there 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 only are three to pick from out of the two positions really. Right. So players that I've liked apart from Parling, Michael Moles. Yeah, Michael course. Moles, when he first came to the Rangers, I thought was going to be the guy that was going to win us the European Cup. <laughs> yeah. In fact, the, the first thing I remember saying uh, when I first saw him was, I think he was about 26 or 27 year old by then. Mm -hmm. where, where the hell has he been all this time? <laughs> how, how can he still be playing for Utrecht at that age? How can how is that possible? Because yeah. um, he was... That, that turn of his, I've, I've still never seen anything like it. I, I say that all the time. Never, ever seen that turn. So for, there was a three month, a three or four month period when he first joined Rangers that he was jaw dropping. He was, he was fantastic. And if I talk about three or four month periods, Marco Negri was another one who, who um, I, I, Christ, I, I don't know how many. I think he scored about thirty goals by the end of November or something. It was, it was just something yeah. stupid, wasn't it? Um, he was scoring two and three goals almost every week. It felt like. <laughs> but what's the point of doing it for three months and then disappearing forever after that? No, that's it. Um, if I go into this century, um, Dado Posso was a player I really liked, an absolute warrior, but a, a fine. A, if you talk about a leader of the line, he was a, he was a leader of the line. Um, what a player though, as well, Davey. What, like, absolutely. Of, you, you, you know, again, probably warrior type, but he, but he could play. Like, absolutely, you know, he was, absolutely. He, he was. He had it all. Yeah, he was. He was terrific. Um, Morelos in Europe. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not as sure about Morelos domestically, but Morelos in Europe has been an absolute sensation, hasn't he? I know no, not. Not this season. I know that, but um, no, no. You, you I, never thought, I, I never thought I'd see a Rangers striker scoring consistently against the standard of teams he was scoring against. I mean, yeah, and and the performances to go with it. And he well. was. And he was. He was bullying. Sometimes three central defenders. <laughs> never mind two. He was, that's the, he was occupying, I always say, he was occupying two or three centre-halves by himself. But, mm. but he wasn't just doing it against, you know, some of the, the poorer teams in Europe. Mm. You talk about he, he, the Portos, you know, the um, Feyenoords. But, but the Porto got to the, the semi-final of the Champions League or the quarter-final the year after. Yep. You know, they, they talk yep. about how good Pepe was. But the two games, Morelos absolutely bullied him. Like, yeah. yeah. It, um, it, was, it was definitely fair. I, I actually thought 
the, the, see the night we played final away. He, he scored two goals two to start heads. the second half. Two yeah. headers. The biggest compliment I could pay on that night was those headers reminding me of Derek Johnson. That's how good. That's how good I thought he was that night. I thought he was an absolute was superstar that night. Yeah. Um, but that's far too inc- far too inconsistent. Yeah, to, yeah. to make this team. And yeah. aye, so the the three it comes down to. Well, oh, it comes down to two because Alan McCoy has to play. Right. Yeah. There's no way Alan McCoy is not in anyone's yeah. team that's that sat through or watched his entire Rangers career. Um, and it's not just because the number of goals he scored, actually. Although that's a big, that's a, almost a huge reason. Um, obviously, what a goal scorer he was. Ali was actually an all-round forward. Yeah. He, he could he could do everything. He could he could play it front himself if he had to. See what you talk. Maybe not the way Morelos could against three international class centre backs, but he could play up front himself. He could make he could make goals all for himself if nobody else was there to do it for him. Great penalty box player, yeah, but he was also a great team player. He could, he could more than look after himself. He was kicked black and blue most weeks, actually. Yeah, yeah. Back before the day that you got a yellow card for looking at the players the wrong way, he, he genuinely could look after himself. But what a penalty box player he was. He scored every kind of goal you could you could ever imagine. I mean, he, 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 would, he would score a 25-yarder, then three minutes later he'd score, and if he's backside two yards out, he, he scored all kinds of goals. Do you know what, though? Just, just on that, Davey, it frustrates me a little bit when people knock that, though, because um, I've seen oh, it today on TalkSport. They've been talking about it uh, all day today and, and the <clears> last couple of days. People are starting to knock Harry Kane for scoring tap-ins against lesser, you know, international sides. And, and, and comparing it with Rooney, who scored more in, in bigger, you know, bigger nations. But and, and, and I've heard it a lot with McCoy. Chris Boyd's another one that, that, that got it as well. Oh, it's an, it's an art. Nice. That's an art. Knowing where the ball's going to drop and being and putting it in the back of the net. Absolutely. And I didn't mention Boyd. Boyd, Boyd was a, an excellent goal scorer. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. He was an excellent goal scorer. And do you know what? If anyone could score 130 goals or whatever it was in the Scottish Premier League, why has nobody else done it? No, <laughs> yeah. no, I mean, nobody no. else has done it. So it can't be that yeah. bloody easy, can it? No, it's not, it's not as if Boyd. It's not as if Boyd played for Rangers for fifteen years or something. I don't know, was he five years or something in the, in the Premier League? He scored one hundred and thirty goals or something in the Premier League. So a lot of them goals are at Kilmarnock as well. Yeah, a lot yeah. of them at Kilmarnock. So no, yeah. absolutely. Boyd, Boyd, Boyd gets knocked. I, I see it again today. The, obviously, the Legends game yesterday. And I think yeah. God, you don't realize the amount. Of, you know, we're talking about a season. And by the way, this is why we're not winning the league this season, David. It's the games against St Mirren, St Johnston, yeah, um, where you don't play well, but you win one nil, two one, and Boyd scores two mm. in the box. That's that's Absolutely. what we, that you know that's you can't you can't ever not. And to be honest, that's why Morelos I've talked to it domestically against yeah. compared to Europe, yeah, because I think his goal scoring record against the poorer teams in Scotland isn't he good enough. It's fine, agree, <laughs> absolutely. So Ali's got to be there. Um. And I've picked Derek Johnson to play beside him, as you might imagine. Um, yeah. Don't get me wrong, Mark Haley was an absolute hurricane up front for Rangers. Um, what what a, he had pace, he had power, he was good in the air, he was good in the ground. He was a there was a period in the early nineties. I, I I I can't believe he didn't play for England. Yeah. I think he played once in a friendly or something, but I don't know why England didn't pick him. He was terrorising teams all over Europe. And yeah. he didn't. He didn't play. <laughs> I never understood that. Why, why, do think, it, why do you think that, David? Is it because <coughs> is it the old case of well, he's he's, he's playing in Scotland, so I think so. I think so. I think so. So, I think so. so even it, even you got that then, even though we yeah. had the players that we had, yeah. Hmm. But no. I just think Johnson shades it in a, in a in a couple of ways. I think he was a better all round footballer. He was even better in there. And I think he was a better goal scorer as well. And I think if I look at I will hate he was an absolutely perfect partner for McCoy. I think Johnson was every bit as good as as a partner for him. And that the great thing about Johnson is in this particular team that I've picked, if we go under the cosh a little bit, which they won't because nobody'll get the ball off us, but if 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 they went under the cosh a little bit, Johnson can drop back into midfield. 
Yeah. And he's he was an international class midfield player as well as well as in my view the the best. Along with McCoy, is the best centre forward I've ever seen the Rangers. What, what what has he got, Davy? Derek Johnson, one hundred and is it one hundred and forty, one hundred and thirty? What goals? Goals, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh no, it's, it's two hundred and oh, yeah, it? something. Like it? It's only more than two hundred. Oh, really? De- De- yeah. Derek Johnson played oh, probably the equivalent of at least five seasons, not as a striker, right. and yet he was until McCoy arrived. He was Rangers' post-war top goal scorer. Yeah, yeah, incredible. Uh, and to score, he was, to score, uh, uh, you know, is it was he 16, 17, 16, 16, 16 when he scored. Oh. Yeah, he, the first Rangers player to go in my bedroom wall because of that. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to sort of visualize that happening today. See, he was, he was my he was, he was my boyhood hero, so he was always yeah. going to come out of this team, really, but. At 16, he scored the winner in the League Cup final against Celtic. At 17, he scored in the Scottish Cup final against Celtic. At 18, he'd moved to centre half and he won the European Cup Winners' Cup. (laughs) At 19, he was then a midfield player, played against Ajax, and Johan Cruyff said he was the only Scottish player he thinks could get into the Ajax team. That's the one we're talking about, the Ajax team. By the time he was 20, he was a midfield player that won the league. And then at 21 and 23, he was a top scorer at centre forward and two treble winning teams. He you was... That's, uh, if he's... He's probably, probably the most... Underrated is not the right word, but unrevered Rangers player in my lifetime. I only had no idea. I, I Obviously, the, the cup final at 16, but what you've just followed that with there, I had not, honestly, not... No he, he, he was capped by Scotland as a teenager at centre-half, and a few years later, he was Scotland centre-forward. I mean, Jesus. What a foot, an, as an all-round player, I don't yeah, think yeah. you're going to ever see that again. Yeah. I think he I think he played something like 120 games for Rangers when he was still a teenager. I mean, we go we go back to it, David. Like we just sold Calvin Bassey for what twenty million. What what was what would Derek Johnston go for? And that is peak uh, 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 peak DJ uh, these days. Jesus. Um, if it was the English Premier League with the money down there, he's, he's a hundred million player. Yeah. If 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 you look at Jesus Christ, Harry Maguire went for eighty million quid. Oh yeah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that always blows that out the question right. Well, yeah, but, well, if Paul Pogba could be a hundred million, then God knows what Derek Johnson was. Yeah, yeah, nice. No, uh... So if it, it feels instinctively is yeah. you should pair hate yeah. with McCoy's because they were so bloody good together. But I can't not pick Terry Johnson. He was just too good. He was yeah. too good. And uh, just just to think though that you know scoring the winner against Celtic at sixteen, you know. And, uh, if someone done that now, they wouldn't be at Rangers the season after. We won't ever see that again. I don't even yeah. think we'll see it at 18. Well, uh, to, be, really to, be, to be fair, I, I think he's the only... I think he's still the youngest player to score a goal in a cup final in Britain full stop. Never mind never mind the youngest to score one for Rangers. Yeah. I don't yeah. think there's ever been a, somebody as young as him scoring a cup final. No. Pro- a proper cup final. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, he was... I bore people. I can bore people to death about Derek Johnson because I, I, I think too many people don't appreciate just what he achieved. And the, the crazy thing was, by about 1979, when he was still only about 25 years old, he was past his peak. Yeah. He he should have had another six, seven seasons as the the tornado that he was in his first eight or nine years. Um, but when Jock Wallace left for whatever reason, he was never quite that player again he was still a bloody good player but he wasn't he wasn't that player anymore I think he's off the field actually probably really yeah. I think I think he needed a sergeant major in yeah. running him and and instead of that he got an ex-teammate yeah, yeah. And, and as well David probably coming through and playing so many games he did so young I always mm-hmm. say that that ends up catching up I think we've seen it obviously with, with a lot of 
you know, a lot of players breaking into the team so young, they do it at a certain age, and I think they do hit a brick wall. Um, yeah. Well, certainly there's not too many, not too many that come in at teenagers and they're still in the first team at 33, no. 34, isn't there? No, no, definitely not. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised by that. I feel like I've done a bit of a injust, injustice there, but uh, to me, as I say, but before to, I just know him from sort of Clive One when he was on that. And, uh, <laughs> and funnily enough, when he when he was on the when he was on the radio, I think. A lot of younger folk turned against him because they, they felt he was a wee bit too critical of Rangers or a, yeah. too friendly yeah. with the sort of the other side of the divide in Radio Clyde and things like that. Yeah. Um, I think if anyone listened to um, to to our podcast after games, they'd probably say we're too critical. I think <laughs> sometimes you, again, he, he might just one of the people that says it how it is. I've got I've got no no problem with that at all. No. Um, but I mean, over recent years, there's not been too much to be <laughs> to be jumping no, about that for yeah. sure. So, uh, I, 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 last thing I'll say about, 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 about DJ is that um, I, I've, I've got a book somewhere upstairs. I can't remember what it's called now. Stephen Halliday wrote it. Someone wrote the history range, but in it, in it, it lists what the, that particular author thought was the fifty greatest Rangers players of all time. It was, it was, the book was the book was written about twenty years ago. Right. Um, Derek Johnson's number eight. And that's over a hundred. At that time, that was over a hundred and thirty. He's above all all kinds of yeah. legendary players. Um, and I, he, maybe maybe that's exaggerating a little bit. I don't know, but I certainly think for the nineteen seventies, anyway, he was he was as good as this, you're going to see. He was as good as there was. Oh, brilliant! That <clears throat> I, I I think um, I had a feeling he'd, he'd go in there. Uh, though David, that was the one. In, nah. in the but um, but that's some team, by the way. I actually going to put this in there now. I think that team will struggle to be beaten. Be well, team. I've got the advantage of picking over a longer period of time than a lot of others. Yeah. But that I would, I would, I would, I would back them against anyone else without seeing anybody <laughs> else. And saying that, there might you might have a seventy-year-old comes on that, that puts Jim Baxter and folk in it that maybe I'll struggle with, but. Um, yeah, yeah. Obviously, Baxter's one that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I actually did see him once. I did see him once. I got taken to a game in the late sixties when I was only about six year old because my dad wanted me to see Jim Baxter, but he was past it. He was yeah. big, overweight. Uh, obviously, it wasn't the player that everyone wanted it to be. Uh, no, that, he, he, I've, I've watched his, his documentary a, a couple of times and. Um, yeah, he sounds like he was he was top top draw, but uh, yeah, no, that, that's going to be our aim, David. We're going to. I've got to try and beat. Try and get sides to try and beat your thing. Though. That's it. Hey, I'll, I'll take I'll take on all comers. I'll, I'll stand with that one. I, I'm, I'm still saying should Gaza have been a, too late now. The team's packed. The team's packed. Oh, do you know what? I'm going to tell the boys now straight away. You're going to have to listen to this. But Davey ain't put Gaza in his best eleven. <laughs> no. I know, I know. <laughs> no. Nobody will believe it, but never mind. There had to be one. Yeah, left field one, didn't there? Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, no, I just just want to say, you know, David, thanks so much for for coming on. Really appreciate it. Um, mm -hmm. and I said already that, I, I, yeah, that team's going to take take some beating. But um, no, I really appreciate it. Thank you. No problem at all. Enjoy your pod, and I'm sure I'll be listening to you again shortly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll be back on. Hopefully, um, yeah, I say this will go out, you know, soon. But hopefully, you know, the pods will have a Scottish Cup. To, to celebrate at least this season, David. That's that's the aim. Yeah, let's hope so. Let's hope so. I know I'm getting a ticket at least. So I hope oh. I hope I, I hope I enjoy it more than I enjoyed my last trip to Hamden. Yeah, no, yeah, because they're, they're you know filming this today. Uh, the, 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 the tickets have gone out for sale today. I'm right and saying that, David. So um, yeah, well, I've got the email yeah. today. Yeah, yeah, no, brilliant. As I said, hope hopefully um, you know more more cups to come and, and we can talk about. Better players next season. <laughs> Let's hope so. Hopefully, somebody will challenge, come in to challenge my thinking about no modern players on my team. Yeah, yeah, that's the aim for anyone walking in the door next season. I, I, I'll, I'll get Colin to send this to Michael Bill, so he <laughs> is that as well. But yeah. uh, no, thanks so much, Davy, and um, no bother at all. And uh, again, thanks everyone for listening. And um, please, you know, if you, if you fancy uh, coming on and, and giving it giving it a go, get in touch with with the podcast and. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we want to try and get as many of these out as possible. But um, as always, thanks for listening.